Hi, this is Lisa Crosby. I've been working with the AI Builder text classification model and I wanted to share with you some tips and tricks that can help when you're training a model to optimize it to get the best results. Let's get started. So the text classification model in the AI Builder allows you to use an AI model to classify incoming text with one or more tags. So you might use this in a scenario where you've got emails coming in or you're monitoring tweets or any other kind of text that's coming in and you want more than just a, a keyword search. You want to be able to classify it and tag it in a certain way, perhaps so that you can auto route it to a, a particular customer service team. Uh, you might want to set automated responses uh, through marketing emails out to your customers, that kind of thing. So to get started, you need to train a model on a sample data set. And what I'm going to do here is take you through my experience with that and some tips and tricks uh, that I learned along the way that I hope will help you get better results from this and save you some time. The AI Builder gives us a wizard style interface for setting up AI models, which means it's easier than ever before to get started with AI and building your own apps that have AI. But what I discovered is that despite the fact that that process of setting it up is now suddenly very easy, there are some other factors to consider where human intelligence is absolutely still required here. So this is the real data that I started with and uh, I had a little bit of fun with this. This is real data from uh, Twitter where um, people are complaining about their experience with various airlines. I've just taken a snippet here from United, but believe me, it goes across many, many airlines and people have many things to complain about. So this is what you're looking at. And, and you can see that there's, you know, there's some stuff in there that's kind of messy. It's not a nice, neat uh, data set. I really wanted to test this out with, with real data. So the first thing I did was grab that data. It was, it was already classified, came from a, from a publicly available data set. And this is what it looked like. So we had 580 tweets that had the tag bad flight, 847 with cancelled flight, and so on through all of those other things. And all I did was take that data set exactly as it was. I need a minimum of 100 uh, examples to train my model. And I plugged that in and I waited to see what would happen. And this is what happened. Oh dear, 39% performance accuracy. So I'm not feeling at this point terribly confident uh, with my data set. 39% is not going to be a very good prediction score. If I was trying to use this in a real life scenario, I wouldn't be terribly happy with that. So this got me to thinking, what, what can I do? What things can we do to optimize this and to get a, a certainly hopefully a better result than 39%? So one of the first things I noticed here, and, and if you read the documentation on the AI Builder, it says you need 100 examples per tag, but it also suggests that you don't want to skew the examples too much. So you can see there, for instance, that there's 2,194 customer service issues and only 74 for damaged luggage. So right off the, off the bat there, that is really uneven data set. So the first thing I did was to remove the ones that had fewer than 100, like the, the really tiny ones. So you can see there that's balanced it out a bit. And I ran the model again to see what effect that would have. Much better. Straight off, we've gone from 39 to 50%, but I'm still not happy. I, I still reckon we can do better than that. So I experimented further. That's where I was. And this time what I did is removed the big categories. So that customer service issue, for instance, that had nearly 2,200 entries, brought it down to 700. I took each of the big examples and took them down to about 700 or so, so that we're looking at now a much more even spread. What do you reckon is going to happen? 59% improvement. Not quite as dramatic as the first one, but we're getting better now. And, and I'm starting to feel confident that this data set is something that I can work with at this point. 59%, we're getting, you know, we're getting closer. But, you know, I'm still not satisfied. I, uh, I think we can do better than that. So the next thing I did was to go completely even. What if I took out all of those variations, made it 400 across everything, completely even across the board, and... oh. No, <laughs> it didn't make any difference at all. So really, once you've got the lesson there is to say, if you're starting with massively uneven data sets, you know, some that are really tiny, some that are really huge, that is not helping your model. But the difference of having some with 400, some with 700, 
versus all of them exactly the same really doesn't matter. So as long as you've got roughly even in your data set, roughly even number of samples, you're okay. Getting it exactly even is not something you need to spend your time on. So I'm still stuck at 59%. I still need to do better than that. So let's see what else we can do. I then had a look at the quality of the data rather than just the quantity. So these are examples. As I said, I used a real data set here. I was using real tweets. And these are examples of things that are in the data set. Silence is very telling. I already have four times. Even as a person, I can't look at these and determine what they are. Like I can't tell whether they are about um, lost luggage or damaged luggage or poor customer service. Um, so they're really not helping. So I thought, what if we looked at cleaning up the quality of the data? And this time round, that certainly helped. I took out and I took out a lot of those examples of things that just didn't make any sense, didn't make any reference to anything. 62%, not quite as much of a difference as I was hoping, up from 59, but you know, we're still climbing. So I've still got a bit of work to do, but we're we're getting there. Where we started at 39, certainly a whole lot better. So then the other thing I noticed when I was looking at the data set is that there were a lot of overlapping, overlapping categories in there. Things like customer service issue is a really broad category. Um, and as I was looking at some of these categories, I thought I could give this to 10 different people and I reckon they would classify them slightly differently each time. It wasn't clear to me that the categories were clean. As I said, this was a data set that came pre-tagged. So what I did is I just chopped it right down to three things that in my mind were quite distinct. Bad flight, some kind of bad experience on the flight, a cancelled flight or lost luggage, and to see what would happen if I did that. Whoa, this is looking good now, 78%. So you can see there, huge difference, big jump from, from, from where we were before by simplifying those categories down. So the lesson there is really about having tags that are clear to start with. So if you have your text classified in perhaps too many ways that are overlapped, if you thought, could I give this to a group of 10 people and would they all classify them the same way? You're probably on a winner here. You know, an AI model is, is not going to be able to, to deal as well with those categories that are ambiguous or perhaps too close together as it can with nice, clear categories. So that was a, a, a big learning there. But, you know, I'm still not happy, right? I'm still going to see if I can get higher than 78%. So then I went through and had a look at some of the, the, the quality of the data again back in some more junk. You'll see there, this is sitting in Excel is how I brought it in. There's some hashtag names, um, you know, other various junk in there. So I went through and did another cleanup. So now that I've got down to just the three categories and I'm doing better, I did a little bit of a, a cleanup there. And here we go. Now we're, now we're doing really well. We've gone from um, three categories, tidied it all up. So... 86%. So you remember I started my experiment here with a, a raw data set and it came up at 39. By simplifying the categories, by tidying up the junk and by evening out the volume of different, um, different tags, I've managed to get that up to 86%. So let's have a bit of a play with the model now. Uh, I'm going to go in and show you an example of, of what it does in real life. So here we are, this is my model here sitting at 86% with those three tags. Uh, so this is looking at lost luggage, bad flight and cancelled flight. You can see I haven't published it yet. I will show you in a future video how you can consume the model in a Power App or run flows in Power Automate to, to actually use it in a real world scenario. For now, let's just do a quick test so you can see it in action. So this is a you know test of, of entering some stuff. So I'm going to say where are my bags? And it's going to come back with 93% confident that that's a lost luggage message. So you can see it's not just doing a, a keyword search there, but it's pretty, pretty confident. Let's give it something else. We could say the food was terrible. That never happens on an airline, right? Food's always awesome. <laughs> There we go, 66% confidence that it's about a bad flight. So you can see it's giving you the confidence back. You can actually pick up that confidence rating as well as the tag so that if you're using it to automate something, you can, you can put in a, a, you know, a barrier of, of the confidence level having to be over a certain amount. So there we go, that's our, that's our model. 
So to summarize then, these are the things that matter when you're working on an AI builder text classification model if you want to get the most out of it. Firstly, you need to have a roughly even number of samples per tag. It's no good having, you know, a hundred of one thing and, a th you know, 3,000 of something else. If it's that uneven, you will skew the model and it won't be able to learn properly. So they don't have to be exactly even, but you want them to be roughly of the same order of magnitude of number of samples per tag. Quantity and quality both matter. So in terms of quantity, if you take it down to, you know, having the minimum of 100 per tag, it will work, but you'll get a better result if you have hundreds. So the more examples you have, you are actually giving the model more to work with. But the quality also matters. If you've got junk in there, if you've got, you know, wording that's actually not, not helping or where you've got a real data set, using a, a nice clean data set as your training model is going to get you a, a better result than something that's full of, of, um, full of junk, full of misleading content. And, and one of the biggest lessons here is about how you define your tags and how you define your categories in the first place. You'll get a much better result if you've got nice, clearly distinguished categories of the kind that a human eye could look at and say, yep, that goes into tag one, that goes into tag two, disambiguated. If you've got things that overlap a lot or they're not clearly distinguished, then your model is not going to be as accurate as if you've got nice, clearly distinguished tags. That's it. Good luck with the AI builder. I think uh, the text classification model has some really exciting use cases and I hope that you give it a go and let me know if you've got any feedback or questions. Thanks for watching.